Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arshna Solanki. Here are the headlines we're tracking this evening. Yet another record-breaking day on the Lal Street. Sensex gains over 600 points and Nifty gains nearly 150 points as bulls enter deep into uncharted territory. Shares of Vedanta worth nearly 7,500 crore rupees change hands. Company's promoter accepts a proposal from one of its lenders to sell 2.6% shareholding to help deleverage its balance sheet. Government considers seeking a two-year exemption for five public sector banks to meet the 25% minimum public float norm. Sources say stake sale worth nearly 9,000 crore rupees is likely on the cards for Bank of Maharashtra, Central Bank and Yuko Bank. That's an exclusive. Do not ask farmers for their civil score before extending crop loans, says the Maharashtra government to state-run banks. Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis wants that FIRs be lodged against banks if they make civil score mandatory. The low-key 5G spectrum auction comes to a close after six rounds of bidding. The government receives bids worth a modest 11,000 crore rupees compared to 96,000 crore worth of airwaves on offer. Global auto maker Volkswagen invests a billion dollars into American electric vehicle startup Rivian, also plans to invest an additional $4 billion by 2026. The deal is likely to help the loss-making company's journey to become a cash flow positive. BJP MP Om Birla re-elected as the Speaker of the Lok Sabha through a voice vote defeating Congress MP Suresh, uh, Prime Minister Modi and Leader of the Opposition Rahul Gandhi congratulate Birla, but the House is adjourned for the day after uproar over Birla's statement on emergency. After the Enforcement Directorate CBI arrest, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival in a case connected to the state's excise policy addressing a CBI court in person. K. Jival accuses CBI of manipulating the media. K. Jival asserts that Manish Sisodia is innocent. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange arrives in Australia as a free man. He pled guilty to a single felony charge for publishing U.S. military secrets as part of, a, of an agreement with authorities. Assange will not to be allowed to enter the U.S. territory. And civic authorities in Mumbai take control of the 120 acres of land at Mahalakshmi Racecourse, ending a long-standing dispute. Authorities plan to create a sprawling central park with gardens and open spaces for the public at large. Another stellar day for the bulls as markets continue to post a record close. Uh, Nifty and the Sensex and Nifty Bank hit fresh intraday highs. Nifty hit a new peak of 23,890. The up move was led by Reliance and select banks. Reliance contributed to over 50% of Nifty's gains. Mid-caps underperformed the blue chips. That index ended a quarter of a percent in the red. Prashant Nair is here with the market update. This is turning out to be a great week. Uh, we're in the middle of the week. It's a Wednesday, so two more to go. But, uh, you know, if you take stock of what has happened from last Friday, it's actually uh, quite incredible because, you know, uh, the market was looking like it was starting to stall a little bit. Uh, it was grinding. Uh, but this has been a clear breakout with fresh highs coming in for the frontline indices. So another 150-odd point gain on the Nifty. Banks, of course, uh, participating uh, you know, in an enthusiastic way once again. Nothing like, of course, the big move that we saw yesterday. Yet, yesterday, uh, the gains were largely led by the financials. It was more broad-based today. Mid-caps and small-caps uh, took a back seat, like what we saw yesterday. But yesterday, there was correction. Today, it was not really a correction. It was just that, uh, you know, the indices did not do very much. Although, I must say, it's a very vibrant screen. I'll get to stocks which participated in the upside uh, from mid- and small-caps. Large caps, I'll just start with that. Reliance, of course, uh, is the uh, sort of, you know, new addition. So 4% gain and uh, single-handedly really pulling its weight and about 60% of the nifty gains come, came through from just that one stock. Telecom was a theme, which uh, and Bharati, of course, uh, the nifty big gainer there. ICICI Bank, of course, you know, sh showing up for banks there as far as large caps are concerned. There were, you know, stocks which came off as well, but nothing really meaningful, at least on the large cap front. In the broader space, I'll start with gainers because this is where there was humongous volumes. Uh, look at this, Garden Reach and IREDA from the PSU space. Uh, telecom, I said, right? Bharti, Nifty, but idea outside of it. Bharti, Hexacom was a big mover. Cement, India Cements, Orient Cement were big movers. Names like Titagar, uh, CESC, uh, you know, came through. These water companies, uh, Vietech, Vabag, Iron Exchange, you know, 8-10% gains. 
there were these uh, sort of companies where there is there are triggers lined up ahead. Raymond was up sharply. IIFL, uh, Stylum saw a sort of a brokerage initiation, big gains there. And there was EMS Limited, uh, you know, EPAC 361, which is a wealth management firm, Power India, Senco, TCI Express. TCI Express, of course, has been a uh, underperformer, and that came through with about a 4-5 percent again as well. On the downside, some pullbacks: NMDC and Moil, uh, both uh, old companies. There was ITDC, which which was down. Mapma India, there was a block deal, so it was uh, uh, reflecting that discount. And the, the smaller MFIs, microfinance companies, Mass Financial, Satin Credit Care, also under a bit of pressure. Back to you. Right, uh, thank you, Prashant, for that. Uh, now to the daily monsoon tracker. Rainfall deficit across India has widened to more than 18%, with the monsoon yet to cover the entire country. The Met Department has warned of very heavy rainfall along the west coast and northeast India till the 30th of June, but large parts of northern India are currently staring at huge rainfall deficit. The rains in Punjab are 77% below normal. In Uttar Pradesh, it's 71% below normal as things stand. Vedanta shares are worth close to 7,500 crore rupees changed hands today. The company's promoter confirmed accepting a proposal from one of its lenders to sell 2.6% shareholding to help deleverage its balance sheet. Post the transaction, the company's debt would have reduced by over $650 million. Hormaz Fatakia joins us uh, with the more. Uh, Hormaz, uh, only last week, Agarwal had uh, told us that there were no plans on their part to bring down their current stakeholding. What changed? Well, possibly the need to deleverage the balance sheet may have brought about this move. Now, the street was abuzz with Vedanta's promoters looking to sell some stake, and that did happen this morning. Vedanta Resources confirmed that they did permit their banks to sell 2.6% stake in the company. Now, this was done to deleverage the balance sheet, as I just said, and to fund strategic growth initiatives. Now, but that was not the entire deal. It was much larger. 4.8% equity had changed hands in multiple blocks and was valued at close to 8,000 crore rupees. The average selling price was 440 rupees a share. And based on that, if the promoters sold 2.6%, they could have pocketed a cool 4,400 crore rupees, which may have gone for the deleveraging purposes. Now, interestingly, this comes just a week after Vedanta Group Chairman Anil Agarwal had told CNBC TV18 that there is no such plan to bring the stake down from the then current levels of 61.95%. Of course, he left a caveat in that statement. He stated that if an investment banker comes and gives an idea, they will work on it. And so they did. Now, this isn't the first time that the promoters of Vedanta have sold stake. Over the last 18 months, they've sold nearly 10%. Now, starting December of 22, when the stake of the promoters was just under 70%, if we take today's sale into account, that number will slip to sub-60% now. In August of last year, Twinstar, which is one of the promoter entities, had sold 4.1% stake and pocketed nearly 4,000 crore from that sale. And just earlier this year, Finsider International, the same entity that sold the stake today, had close to just 2% stake. They sold that 2% stake in February for around 1,700 crore rupees. Now, based on these three stake sales in the last 18 months, promoters of Vedanta have raised over 10,000 crore rupees from the Indian entity, and that is excluding the generous dividend payouts. Now, for some throwback. Now, just to jog your memory back to October of 2020, Vedanta's promoters wanted to delist the stock. Now, the proposal was to acquire majority stake from public shareholders at a price of 87 and a half rupees a share but on october 9th 2020 the delisting failed why because it could not get the required number of shares tendered for the delisting to be successful now interestingly while the delisting price was 87 and a half majority of the bids were placed at 320 rupees a share now even from those levels of 320 rupees the stock is up almost 40 percent so now how has the stock done since that failed delisting now between october to december of 2020 the stock rose 18 percent and then benefiting from the commodity upcycle in 2021 the stock had doubled in value now after two years of negative returns in 22 and 20 the stock is up already 70% so far in the first six months of the year. The analysts too are starting to warm up to the stock. Now in just nine months, the number of sell recommendations on the stock have come down from just 42% in September of last year to just 7% currently. So that's Vedanta for you. From a failed delisting attempt at 87 bucks to selling shares at 5x that price, it's been quite a journey. Right, uh, thank you, Hormaz. Uh, interesting insights uh, there. On to a CNBC TV18 exclusive. The government is considering to seek a two-year extension for five public sector banks to meet the 25% minimum public float norm. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that Bank of Maharashtra, Central Bank and Yuko Bank are likely to raise cumulatively 9,000 crore rupees by qualified institutional placements. Sapna Das is here with more. 
So basically, uh, on expected lines, and uh, this has been doing the rounds for quite some time. Uh, there's already an ongoing extension uh, of exemption given to uh, these five uh, particular bank entities that we have been talking about. Uh, that uh, ends sometime August. So in the meanwhile, uh, you know, the government is now proposing uh, yet another extension of the exemption. As per the current practice, around two years is the time uh, timeline given, uh, you know, to various entities to meet these norms. And we're given to understand that probably that has what. That, that is what exactly has been proposed. So even while uh, this extension of exemption talk is on and uh, that will come through at some point in time, uh, what, what the banks are doing separately is they are already trying to meet the 25% public float norm uh, of SEBI. So you have these three entities, uh, Bank of Maharashtra, uh, Central Bank, Yuko Bank. It is, these three put together around 9,000 odd crores is what they are planning to raise uh, via QIP. Uh, probably this should uh, unfold with the current year as well as the as well as some part of the next financial year. So, out of the five entities, including Punjab and Sindh Bank and IOB, at least three of these uh, uh, you know players are trying to do the needful. So, uh, this timeline is likely to be given to give more breathing space to these banks to do the needful. And let's also keep in mind that a calibrated fundraising, both for growth capital as well as to meet the 25% public growth norm, I think that's a two-pronged strategy being adopted by the government, and that is what is going to be followed. So this is the update as of now, but of course we'll have to wait for the gather notification indicating the exact timeline for the extension of the exemption and uh, you know from when it kicks in. There is no urgent emergent need on me to raise the capital for growth, but yes, I am currently maintaining a, a CRR of around 17%. I think in mind we have actually uh, taken a board approval and uh, board has uh, permitted us for this year for a capital raise. But uh, what will be the deal size and what opportune time? And uh, that, uh, as we uh, go along the year, we will take a call at opportune time and do the capital raise. The Maharashtra government has warned state-run banks against denying crop loans to farmers based on their Sibyl score. Speaking at a state-level bankers' committee meeting, Chief Minister uh, Eknath Shinde urged banks to support farmers in times of trouble. Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis said that banks will face FIRs from the state if they make civil scores mandatory to extend loans to farmers. Citing Sibyl, banks are denying loans to farmers and this will not happen now. Whatever the banks say in the meeting, you have to implement that as well. If banks continue to impose civil conditions, we will lodge an FIR against them. Well, Maharashtra's Chief Minister Eknath Shinde has said that farmers should not be forced to provide their civil score when they apply for crop loans. He made these comments at a state-level bankers meeting in Mumbai earlier this week, where he emphasized the need for banks to be flexible and support farmers who were facing challenges. In fact, the state government officials went a step further and they said that they may consider inviting FIRs against banks if they make these scores a precondition. Now, Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis said that Reserve Bank of India representatives were also called for this meeting and that it was categorically conveyed to them that national banks should not make civil scores of farmers a precondition to issue crop loans or there would be FIRs invited against them. Now, keep in mind, farm loans is a very sensitive matter for a country like ours. We've had several instances of loan waivers being announced to support farmers by various governments. In fact, Recently, uh, reports suggest states like Telangana, Jharkhand and Punjab have either announced a loan waiver or are considering it, which may be good politics, but it is considered bad economics because it spoils the credit discipline. But in this case, Maharashtra has not announced any waiver, but it is seeking the bank's support to make these farm loans easier for the agriculture sector. Now, while RBI has not issued any specific instructions regarding the requirement of this civil score for giving agriculture loans, we understand it is part of the matrix that is used for credit scoring, but certainly not the only criteria, nor is it as crucial a metric for giving crop loans as it may be, say, in the case of personal loans. So while banks do have to meet their agriculture target under priority sector loans, we'll have to see if this diktat by the Maharashtra state affects lending to agriculture by banks here on. 
Thank you, Ritu. For that, uh, the big political story, NDA candidate Om Birla has been re-elected as the Speaker of the Lok Sabha by a voice vote. He defeated the opposition candidate and Congress MP K. Suresh in a rare contest for the post. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Leader of Opposition Rahul Gandhi were seen sharing a handshake in the Parliament as they escorted Birla to the Speaker's chair. मेरी तरफ से आपको शुभकामनाएं हैं लेकिन इस पूरे सदन की तरफ से भी आपको अनेक अनेक शुभकामनाएं हम सबका विश्वास है कि आप आने वाले पांच साल हम सबका मार्गदर्शन भी करेंगे और देश की आशा आपके छाये पूर्ण करने के लिए ये सदन अपना दायित्व निभाने में आपकी बहुत बड़ी भूमिका रहेगी आपके चेहरे को ये मीठी मीठी मुस्कान पूरे सदन को भी प्रसन्न रखती है स्पीकर सर दिस हाउस रिप्रेजेंट्स द वॉइस ऑफ इंडिया पीपल एंड यू स्पीकर सर आर द फाइनल आर्बिटर ऑफ दैट वॉइस ऑफकोर्स द गवर्नमेंट हैज पोलिटिकल पावर but the opposition also represents the voice of india i am confident that you will allow us to represent our voice allow us to speak om birla's inaugural speech was met with uproar in parliament birla pledged to maintain parliamentary decorum and hoped there would be no deadlock but meaningful discussions he then recalled the emergency calling it a dark period in history This triggered protests from the opposition benches eventually leading to the house being adjourned. BJP MPs protested in parliament demanding an apology from Congress on the emergency. Ye sadan 1975 mein desh mein aapatkal emergency lagane ke nirnay ki kade shabdon mein ninda karta hai. Iske sath hi hum un sabhi logon की संकल्प शक्ति की सराहना करते हैं जिन्होंने इमरजेंसी का पुनर्जो विरोध किया अभूतपूर्व संघर्ष किया और भारत के लोकतंत्र की रक्षा का दायित्व निभाया इमरजेंसी का वह समय हमारे देश के इतिहास में अन्याय काल का एक काला खंड था President Draupadi Murmu will address a joint session of parliament tomorrow uh, that is the latest uh, on that note uh, it's time for a short break but uh, coming up next civic authorities in mumbai take control of the 120 acres of land at mahalakshmi race course ending a long standing dispute more details on that when we return Welcome back. The CBI has arrested Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal inside the premises of the trial court in the liquor excise policy case. Following the arrest, Kejriwal has withdrawn his plea in the Supreme Court, challenging the Delhi High Court stay on his bail. He'll file a fresh plea challenging his arrest. Ashmit Kumar is here with the details. Well, it's been a rocky 24 hours for the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. to say the least it was yesterday at 2:30 pm uh, when we had the delhi high court very clearly confirm the stay as far as the bail that was uh, granted to kejriwal was concerned the high court stayed the bail now after that the expectation was that in about less than 24 hours which is today uh, this afternoon the supreme court was expected to take up uh, kejriwal's application challenging that stay however in the intervening hours which is late last evening the cbi acted and moved to arrest Arvind Kejriwal at least that's the impression that went out uh, to the aam aadmi to the public so to speak this morning at 10:30 am uh, when at rouse avenue court kejriwal was produced before this uh, trial court it then appeared that technically the arrest was not done the arrest took place this morning in the premises of the rouse avenue court and since then the cbi has gone forward sought 5 days of custody of arvind kejriwal to interrogate him now what's interesting is that there was a short outburst that the delhi cm arvind kejriwal had in trial court where he hit out at the cbi for trying to suggest Uh, that Arvind Kejriwal is somehow trying to pin a uh, bill uh, on Manish Sisodia Arvind Kejriwal denied any such assertions <coughs> denied such statements and said that uh, he very clearly will insist uh, that there is no guilt to be attributed 
to Manish Sisodia. So on the back of that, it's about 4.25 right now. Uh, we are still awaiting clarity. 4.30 p.m. is when the trial court will come out with its order and give clarity whether or not uh, the, it will grant a CBI this custody of five days uh, that has been sought. So clarity awaited uh, moments from now from the trial court. Back to you. All right. Uh, thank you, Ashmit. Uh, we'll keep uh, tracking those developments. Uh, moving on, the neat paper league controversy has become one of the top debated topics across the country. Students have taken uh, to the streets at Jantar Mantar in Delhi, demanding the abolition of the National Testing Agency. They're also seeking a reconduct of the neat exam and the resignation of Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan. Danish Anand gets us this ground report from Jantar Mantar. Police and CBI inquiry in five states, over 20 arrests, new NDA DG and formation of a special high-level committee. Despite all of these steps taken by the union government, students in India are still enraged against the alleged irregularities of what we've seen at the NEET 2024 undergraduate examinations. Students of JNU in solidarity with uh, affected students uh, are here in Dantra Mandar protesting against the irregularities what we've seen in NEET. Uh, we are joined by one of uh, the students. Ma'am, we have protest here NEET. Ko lekar, uh, humne dekha कि केंद्र सरकार ने काफी कदम उठाए हैं इस पूरे मुद्दे को सॉल्व करने के लिए क्या उससे सेटिस्फाइड नहीं है जो उनके कानून लाए हैं वो मतलब पेपर लीक्स को रोकने के लिए जो कानून लाए हैं वो पूरी तरह से लिपक होती है वो एनडी के वो एनडी को बचाने के चक्कर में वो अपना धंधा बचाने के चक्कर में वो जो बच्चों का भविष्य नहीं देख रहे हैं वो केवल धंधा बचा रहे हैं अपना अपने वो सो कॉल्ड कानून लाके वो लिपक होती है एनडी के ऊपर की आप एक करोड़ जुर्माना लगा रहे हैं आप उनको जेल जेल करा रहे हैं मांग है हमारी एनडी उसको स्क्रैप करना कराना पड़ेगा और जो धर्मेंद्र प्रधान है शिक्षा मंत्री है उनको इस्तीफा देना पड़ेगा Civic authorities in Mumbai have taken control of the 120 acres of land at Mahalakshmi Racecourse, ending a long-standing dispute. The authorities are planning to create a sprawling central park with gardens and open spaces for the public at large. Shilpa Rani Peta is here with the details. What you see behind me is one of the largest remaining open spaces in Mumbai. This is the Mahalakshmi Racecourse, spread over 211 acres. But this is now set to get a makeover with the BMC getting the Maharashtra Cabinet's approval to take over 120 acres of this land to turn it into a central park along with open spaces. Now, this land, remember, was originally leased to the Royal Western India Turf Club in 1914, but that lease ended in 2013 without any renewal. But does a BMC taking over this land mean that, that it will put an end to the iconic horse racing that takes place here? No, the 91 acres continues to remain with the Royal Western India Turf Club and the horse racing will very much continue. Now, we are yet to get clarity on what exactly the BMC plans to do when it says it will construct a central park and open spaces. That is something that the BMC is yet to reveal in terms of a concrete plan. Now, remember when these plans were made public, there was a lot of criticism that came in from citizens and activists. They were worried that this will uh, threaten one of the large, uh, last remaining open spaces in Mumbai and open uh, doors to potential exploitation by commercial land developers. They have said that they want this to be maintained as an open space for the public. Now, the activists that we spoke to have said that while they protested earlier in the year, they are now awaiting a clear plan from BMC before they can go ahead with any legal action or any form of protest. Right, with that is a wrap on Business 360. The news continues after this short break.